This podcast is brought to you by Two More Reps Coffee Beans. Get your two more reps with this natural pre-workout. Buy your bag at twomorereps.com.au. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Paul's Body Engineering Podcast. Today, once again, I'm going to run solo because um, I haven't lined up any interviews for uh, a couple of weeks just because I'm in the thick of my own contest prep and you know my ability to think cognitively and think clearly and concisely and, and my organisational skills have somewhat taken a beating because of my um, emotional state, my uh, fatigue levels. And just how um, tired I am in other aspects. You know, I've got to put all my energy into obviously managing my business, looking after my clients and, and my family. So, but that's what I wanted to talk about in today's uh, podcast, which is a great segue. I wanted to talk about the reality of the depths of contest prep. And I haven't given this one a title as yet, but it is um, very much something that a lot of people aren't aware of unless they've experienced it firsthand themselves because. Right now, even though I sound relatively positive, which I do put on that persona a lot of the time, I am in um, the depths of fatigue. I am struggling. I am tired. I am hungry. I'm emotional. I'm very, very irritable. And all of this comes from obviously 30 plus weeks of dieting. I've got heavy diet fatigue. Doesn't matter how much food I eat, it's not satisfying. My energy levels are at an all time low. Um, I can't sleep properly. I've got no libido. Um, yes, I look amazing. Like I am sharp as a tag and probably the best I've ever looked. But it, it, it's it's really ironic that you know the better you look, the worse you feel, and that's the truth. Like I'm coming in today is Thursday, and this podcast won't be released until Monday. I'm coming into my second show of the season, the ICN Australian Titles, um, held in Brisbane this year, um, having obviously done Townsville three weeks ago, and and the the gap between Townsville and, and uh, the Nationals has been so long it felt so long it was three weeks it felt so long and it's drawn out and drawn out and geez it's i've done it hard and look the the point of this podcast is not to get empathy or sympathy or have people feel sorry for me it's to talk the truth it's to be genuine and transparent um because with this sport we only really see the end result um from most people you know we see the the glitz, the glamour, the amazing physiques on stage, the aesthetics, the fun, the the that loud music, the the snappy videos. We don't see what this past, what the final six weeks looks like. And anyone who has competed before, and obviously uh, in particular, I mean this with all due respect, uh, in particular in a leaner division, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For anyone who hasn't, well, this is why I want to do this podcast. I want to talk about the truths and the hardship that you have to go through. Like, it is tough, it is fucking hard. My legs have never felt so heavy. When you get to a really low body fat percentage, and not all divisions require that level of conditioning, obviously, but when you do get to a, you know, maybe a subpar 10%, even though I don't like using the percentages as a guide, um, your energy is just non-existent because your body is relying on what energy stores you have and what food you consume. And when you have neither, You've got no energy to run, so it's amazing how it really impacts your life. You you can't think as sharply or as clearly as you normally would. You're not as uh, responsive as you normally are. It disrupts your sleep because with sleep, think about it. How do we sleep effectively? We we sleep based on energy. Okay, the energy that we consume throughout the day provides us with the energy to sleep because we need energy to sleep. When you don't have enough energy to get through each and every day, your sleep is disrupted. So your body can't function properly in its sleep cycle. So I am constantly awake, up and down, restless, uh, so my sleep is significantly impacted, even though as a coach, I stress to my clients, prioritize your sleep because it's obviously, one, your biggest fasting window, two, it's the best opportunity you've got to repair and recover. Um, But it's really, really hard. You know, no libido. Um, My sex drive is is almost non-existent as a male, so because my testosterone levels are so low. Um, It's the last thing I feel like doing because I have no energy to do it, you know, and that's no disrespect to my wife who's been incredibly supportive through this entire journey. It's just that I just don't have the energy. Um, And then, you know, my irritability levels, oh my God, like 
Sitting back and reflecting is, is a great thing to do in contest prep because you can actually see the rationale behind some of your decisions and some of the, the responses and the emotion that you have. Um, and I'm going to have to take my kids out to like, you know, a couple of hours of time zone or to a movie or something to thank them for putting out with me because I have been significantly more snappy. I have been a lot more um, aggressive towards them in some ways. Um, you know, over simple things like stupid shit that really shouldn't bother me is really grinding my gears because I am so irritable. But I can't help the response that I'm generating because I'm cranky, I'm hungry, I'm emotional. So I, I transpire that, I refer that on to somebody else in a midst to help me feel better, which it doesn't. You know, and then the same thing, I do it with my wife all the time. Fortunately, she's obviously been through this with me several times, so she knows how I can get, and she sort of takes it on the chin and just doesn't obviously uh, take it to heart too much. But it, it is starting to grind on her as well, and I know that firsthand that she's starting to wear down because there's only so much you can take before you start to give in, before that shield or that that barrier starts to, um, to waver and crack. And, uh, yeah, she's certainly getting there. But we've only got a couple of weeks to go. Um, you know, heading into ICN Nationals this weekend, then I roll into a second peak week for my NBA Pro Show, and then two weeks later, I've got the WNBF in New Zealand, and then I'm done. Um, but I wanted to talk about just how tough this this period is. So when you are entering a contest prep and you sign up with a coach, and I certainly strongly recommend everyone get a coach, but get a good coach, not just a PT, someone who actually has runs on the board, experience and qualifications to boot. Um, you know, in my experience, a lot of first timers will go, oh, I want to do this show, and I want to do that show, and I want to do five divisions here, and I want to, you know, do, do all these shows, and, you know, they're excited, and, and, and great, that's fantastic, you should be excited, it's a, it's a brilliant sport, I love it, but the reality of it is, like, when you do two or more divisions in a show, by the time you get to the third one, you, you, you're done, you're over it, because you're so fatigued, you're so tired, just from the day, the build-up of the day, the adrenaline, the highs and lows, um, you know, yes, you're eating food probably more than you have leading in, but at the same time, your body's not being satiated or satisfied, um, and you just run out of steam, you know, and, and I've had plenty of clients go, oh, I want to do five divisions, you know, I'm here once, I look this great once, I might as well take full advantage. Yeah, that's all well and good, I get it, but by the, the fourth or fifth, you don't want to be there, and that's the truth of it. You do not want to be there. You, I would rather you put all your emphasis, all your energy, and all your precision into the first couple of divisions that you choose on the day and make them the best ones you can. And then multiple divisions, like I'm, and again, I'm not trying to big note myself here, but I'm a seasoned competitor. I've been doing this now for eight years, over 35 shows. Um, I, can, I can generally handle a longer season. So my season started three weeks ago and it'll finish in three weeks time. So it's a six week season in total, which is long for events in six weeks. That's a long period. My longest has been nine. I've done, I did that once and I'll, I'll probably never do that again. But having big gaps between shows is really, really challenging because you've got such a lull and it seems so far away. If you can minimize that gap to two weeks, it's, it's manageable because you get through a week, then you're in another peak week. Um, or, or you know, week to week is even better because it's peak week into peak week. But, you know, at the start of a season, many people will go, oh, I want to do this show and this show, and I want to experience this and I want to do that. No, look, let's just get to the first one, and then after that, you tell me what you want to do. Um, you know, and I had, I actually did that as well with my coach, Brandon, at the start of the season, because I'd been out of it for three and a half years, I was pumped. I was ready to rock and roll, and I wanted to do multiple shows, um, because one, I wanted to experience other shows and other federations that I hadn't been at before, and two, um, this was potentially going to be my last ever season. So I wanted to leave on a bang and really um, experience the, have the best season I could. But as I got closer, as I got closer, I started pulling shows out and just telling Brennan, look, I'm not going to do this one. You know, I don't know why I picked this one. Um, and I'm really content with what I've got left. It's a good variety. It's a good base. It gives me good opportunity on various stages. And I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, but it is it is so so challenging, so so tough, so so tiring, you know. And for the clients of mine that see me face to face on a weekly basis, they probably don't realise how tough I'm doing it because I have to put on a positive front. I have to because they come to me for my energy. They come to me for a good session, a quality session. If they came to me and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm alright, you know, I'm just feeling tired at the moment, and I'm, you know, my feet are heavy and I've got no energy, and yeah. 
You know, can you imagine rocking up to a personal trainer for a session and that's what, how you're welcomed? You, you'd have a rubbish session yourself and then you'd walk out of it and go, man, that was shit. What, what am I paying for that? So I've got to put on the, the, be on the front foot the whole time. And, and it's been tough. Don't get me wrong. Like you've got to be up. You've got to be up. But then when I come home, I crash and I crash hard. Um, so that's the energy side of things, but the food side of things, like I've never had an emotional attachment with food. I don't, I, and that's why I guess I've, I've been successful <clears throat> in my bodybuilding career because I can disassociate my emotion and food and food just becomes fuel and I eat the same thing through prep the entire period. I keep it simple, I keep it concise, I spread it out, I do what I need to do and I follow my, my coach's instructions. But even food doesn't satisfy me now. Like I'm hungry, right? And you're constantly hungry at this period. You have a meal and you're still hungry. It barely touches the sides. It doesn't satisfy you. And then you roll on three hours later, you have another meal, still unsatisfied because your body fat is so low and the, the fat content that you're eating is relatively low now as well. So there's no level of satiation. It is purely getting absorbed and going to the areas it needs it needs it most. It's getting prioritized to energy, to brain function, to um, you know organs, whatever. Um, so it's a it's really interesting from a psychological and physiological point of view. It's it's a fascinating piece because <clears throat> it just goes to show how important um, our, the food we choose to eat is. How important it is in terms of our energy supply and what it does. You know, we've got such a vast problem when it comes to obesity, overweight people, unhealthy people, immune um, diseases and, and um, you know, illnesses and all sorts of stuff. And a lot of it is based around what we choose to eat. And I try and educate my clients as much as I can each and every week about that, you know, packet stuff. Look at the ingredients on the packets and tell me the, the, the ingredients and the ones you actually know. Um, that's step one, you know, what they're doing to our crops and our, our produce um, in terms of pesticides and herbicides and all the crap they spray on it. That's another problem. Look, I won't go into that now because that's a completely different topic matter, but it's amazing when you start to break it down and you, you get to this point where you're so reliant on food to just function each and every day, you actually start to realize how important it really is and the selections you make. So it's been, it's been interesting. It's been tough. Um, you know, as I said, my wife has put up with a lot and I'm certainly going to repay her after I'm done. Um, you know, I don't know how I'll do that, but I'm sure I will. I've got to pick up my, my slack around the house and, and all that sort of stuff as well. My poor kids have coughed a fair bit as well and I'll repay them. Um, but you know, they have seen me do this time and time again. They know what's going on. They're aware of it. They know the sport. And look, you know, I'm talking very negatively about sport, but at the same time, this sport has given me nearly everything in terms of my career. Um, you know, it gave me a platform to pursue something outside of rugby union, which was my previous sport. It gave me an avenue to build my business off, which I now love coaching athletes. And I've made some of the longest, best, pe uh, oh, I'll start again. Uh, there, there's my cognitive function of working. I've made some terrific friends that will be lifelong friends in this industry that will um, remain with me for the rest of my life. You know, there's no egos in the natural bodybuilding um, environment. Everyone is incredibly supportive. Everyone is very, very um, happy, positive, and we're, we're all in it for a common goal. You know, I often lean on other coaches for advice. I'll reach out if I need some assistance. Like I've obviously got Brandon in my corner um, coaching me, but I have uh, contacted another coach to help with my posing and get other suggestions from, and then I get feedback from others as well. And, and, and it's a very collaborative environment, and that's how it should be. That's really how it should be, and that's the beauty of this sport. So while there are extremely tough times, um, the positives certainly outweigh the negatives, you know, and I know in three weeks time when I'm done, I'll be looking back on this and probably laughing a little bit and going, yeah, it wasn't that bad. But I, I've always made a conscious effort to sit in this moment when it feels the worst and just appreciate what I do actually have. The opportunity to compete is a rare one because firstly, you've got to go through 30 weeks of dieting. Secondly, you've got to have the funds to support that. It's an expensive uh, sport. And then thirdly, you've got to have the support mechanisms around you to make it all happen. You know, we, I've got three young kids, so they have to be looked after. Um, this, you know, my, my training has to take priority over certain things. My dieting, I eat separately to my family now because my food is completely different to theirs, being tracked and weighed, etc. So all these sacrifices do have to be made. So there's a lot going on. But I guess the point of this podcast was to ref reflect, but also highlight 
how crappy I feel right now. Um, you know, I'm hungry, I'm tired. You know, have you ever had, like, it's hard to try and um, detail it in a way that someone who hasn't competed before would understand. Um, but have you ever been, like, maybe out camping for a day or maybe you've been out uh, gardening for a day or fishing is another good example where you're constantly on the go, you're probably under eating, you're a little bit dehydrated, and then you come back home and all you want to do is have a massive feed, um, a big drink of water, hot shower, and sort of unwind and relax. Now, you know that feeling. Times that by 10, um, and, and then you're probably close to how I'm feeling right now because I am constantly of that high level of fatigue. I am emotional. I'm tired. Um, tired, but you can't satisfactorily get sleep to um, cure that tiredness. And then you're hungry all the time without fail. You go to bed hungry, you wake up hungry. It is, yeah. And, and people ask you, well, why the hell do you do it? Because I love the challenge, okay? I love the fact that this sport and this sport alone has developed such mental resilience in me that I know throughout my the rest of my life, my career, whatever, I can basically tackle any sort of adversity or any conflict because I know how deep I've had to go to get through this sport. And that's what makes it so satisfying. Um, you know, we as a society are very soft. We tend to be very uh, offended. Um, <clears throat> we don't handle conflict well, and um, you know we're very, very sensitive. Which there's nothing wrong with. Don't get me wrong, but there's also an element of toughness that we need to, to have, a bit of resilience, because life is always going to throw curveballs at us. There's always going to be tough times. Like COVID was a perfect example. There's going to be financial pressures, family pressures, relationship pressures, career pressures, and we need to have the bones, the resilience to handle that and get out of it the other way. You know, get out of it on the other side. And a lot of the time we don't, we crumble, we bury our head in the sand, we hope it goes away. When a point of fact is you've got to take it head on. You have to take it head on. And this sport has taught me how to do that in many ways where I've got the tenacity and the resilience and the, um, I guess, the guts to manage and get through any form of um, adversity or any form of toughness that life tends to throw at me. So it's amazing that you can sort of draw that from a sport and it's a very unique sport at that. Um, so yeah, look, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to this weekend right now being Thursday at 1 PM. Um, I've still got obviously all of Friday to go plus this afternoon and, um, you know, I won't feel any better. If anything, I'll probably get feel, I'll feel somewhat worse, but as I get close to show day, adrenaline kicks in, excitement kicks in and you start to obviously pick things up and, and you'll have the energy to get through the show and the show day will be amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. My family's coming, my kids are going to be there. Um, you know, and the other thing I guess is I have no expectation as well. Um, I don't put any expectation on my shoulders. You know, this time around, I knew there'd be expectation on me given my stature in the industry and, and the fact that I've obviously got a successful business. A lot of people will be watching, but the win for me is getting there. The win for me is, is completing this journey, getting on stage and being competitive. Whether I place, whether I don't, it doesn't matter. It'd be great if I did, but I'm not going to kick stones if I don't because I know I'm competitive. I know where I stand in terms of my physique. I've employed the best coach in the country to, to get me here. So I've ticked as many boxes as I can that I can control. And the rest is obviously up to the judges. And obviously, it's a very subjective sport. You know, you're putting your hands in a panel of people who have to then interpret the criteria, look at what's in front of them and decide based on that, based on their own personal interpretation of the criteria, who's the best in that lineup. Um, so it's incredibly subjective. <clears throat> so with that being said, you know, it'll probably never be an Olympic sport or anything like that because of that nature, but um, I still love it nonetheless. I love the backstage. I love the excitement. I love the build-up. I love getting on stage, even though I do get the odd nerves, and I just love um, the whole thing about it. So two days to go till nationals, a week until pro show, two weeks until the WNBF, which will be my debut in that federation, which is very exciting. And then, um, yeah, I'll potentially retire and reverse out and um, coach the ne next batch of Team PBE athletes to stage um, next year, which I'm very excited about. You know, it's continually growing. Um, I'm growing as a coach. I have learned so much through this um, this prep. Um, and that's why I'm, I employ Brandon. Like, he is arguably one of the best natural bodybuilding coaches in the world if and also one of the best natural bodybuilders in the world. Um, his knowledge and expertise is second to none. So I wanted the best. I wanted to learn from the best, and I have learned 
a huge amount in terms of nutritional protocols, training strategies, how to peak week someone from his perspective. Um, he's answered all the questions I put to him as, a, as we prepped. And yeah, it's been, it's been an educational process as well as a um, physical one. So I'm, I'm really grateful for him for the opportunity. So I think I'll sign off on that. <laughs> um, oh, that's what I wanted to do. I'm going to finish on this note because um, I, I mentioned before how it's hard to compare um, you know, a contest prep with anything else that someone might have experienced. And you often get asked, well, why are you going back? If you had such a, a, a tumultuous, tough time in those final few weeks, why do you do it again? And I compare that to um, a, a woman giving birth, right? So a woman gives birth for the first time. Um, the, the, the birth itself is traumatic, it's painful, it's hard, it's tiring, but then a baby comes out and all of that goes away. Your, your endorphins kick in, your dopamine kicks in, and your adrenaline kicks in, and you're like over the moon infatuated with this little thing that you've created. So you forget the pain, the trauma, the, the, the tough times, the tightness. You forget all that because of what has just happened. Contest prep is very similar to that because... You get to stage, you have a wonderful experience, um, you know, you do multiple divisions, you might do multiple shows, you get your photos back, you see video, people share your stuff on social media and you have an amazing time and, a, and, and finish on a high and you forget about the tough times. You forget about the moment right now that I'm sitting talking on this podcast about how crap I feel, how shitty I feel. Um, so that that's probably the best comparison I can give and I'll, I'll finish on this note, you know, Anyone who does do contest prep, the the shittier or the crappier you feel, the better you're going to look. And I'll leave you on that. So thank you once again for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please screenshot and share it across your stories on Instagram and Facebook and tag myself at Paul's Body Engineering. If you're interested in any of my coaching services, um, please jump on my website, Paul's Body Engineering. <laughs> Paul's Body Engineering .com and also go there and check out the... Um, the, the shop as well. There's a heap of good stuff there. If you're interested in also um, the Two More Reps copy, please jump on twomoreps.com.au. They are sponsoring this podcast and have done so for a long time. It's a great coffee product. But apart from that, thank you very much for tuning in once again. And as I say to every client every single day, have a great day.